My name is Paul Church from Clarity Crafts here in the UK. Welcome to another Craft Along. I hope everybody's well. I see we've got some early birds in the room over on YouTube. Good evening. Well, yeah, it is good evening, isn't it? I'm used to Groovy Tuesday at 10 in the morning. Um, Glenda, the lovely Grace is in the room from you. So we're international. Um, so Grace is there to help with any questions you have and um, post up any links. That should be my signal from Grace to say that. Hang on, new phone. There we go. Sound is great. All good. Thank you, lovely Grace. So yeah, as I said, International Clarity Towers. Um, me here in Tuscany via Edenbridge and the lovely Grace over in New York. So um, technology is great, isn't it? See, so we've got the lovely Sally in the room, Jane Telford. Yeah, another, really looking forward to Stephen's craft along. Um, didn't have a Groovy Tuesday this week um, because we had our annual parchment retreats at the lovely Spa Hotel in Tunbridge Wells. So yeah, it feels as if, apart from the fact that there's nobody else in the building, it feels as if it should be a Groovy Tuesday episode. Um, but it's not. It's a Friday evening craft along at seven. So I'm looking forward to everybody's company this evening. I know it takes a while, a little bit. I know I'm always early to the party. So um, it may take a while for a few people to pull up a chair and get comfortable. So who else have we got in the room? We've got Janet Mills. We've got Vivian Redfern. Um, luckily, it's not raining here. It's been dry since early afternoon, um, which is nice. We had a little bit of sunshine as well. So, um, so yeah, Tuscan sunshine. But, um, yeah, we've got a lovely... Um, piece of artwork to work on from the lovely Linda Williams and we're going to go through it step by step hopefully together and um, Susie Allen is new good evening Susie and um, ah the lovely Pat Hoskins in the room here comes everybody look one minute to seven and everybody comes flying into the room it's as if the doors have just opened and everybody's rushing in to take a seat so um yeah i i just love seeing all the names come up and um we've got some newbies in the room we've got some regulars and as i said um grace is is in the room with you virtually all the way from new york so she's there to help and if i miss anything she'll drop me a text message and i'll see what i can do so i hope everybody's been keeping well and um, I thought, what we'll do if we have a look on our website under the a Moment of Clarity section, we've created a downloadable ingredients list. And what you can do, you can go ahead and print that off. Some of you may have already done that because Barb posted about it on her blog earlier this afternoon. And um, so, you, and what we'll do in a moment is I'm going to show you the piece we're working on. And we'll work through the, the tick list to make sure everybody's got everything that they need. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to this. So let's have a look at the piece we're going to work on. And we'll go through that tick list whilst everybody's pulling up a chair. Okay, overhead camera. So let me zoom in. I'm going to focus on the, the piece of artwork. And this is a, a lovely piece created by Linda Williams. And she took her inspiration from uh, a piece created by Josie Davidson. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in really, really close so we can really sort of indulge this and have a look. And then we're gonna break it down and then hopefully we're gonna do it together. Whoops, he says, falling off the chair. <laughs> that would have been interesting, wouldn't it? So we're using one of the images and we're going to have a look at some artwork from the fantastic design team as well while everybody gets all their bits and pieces together. And if I'm going to bring this up closer now so we can really see, have a look at those lovely lavender fields, the lovely dottedness and those fields and the sky. Um, it's like pointillism, isn't it? And this is all being created using our Perga Colour pens. But we're going to break it down. We're going to have a, a lovely evening together. 
And if you've got any questions as we go along, ask away. So we're talking about this lovely ingredients list that we're going to need. Okay. So as I say, you can print it off or we can go through it together. So many of you would have bought the um, Linda's Layering Frame Set 4, which is Tuscany. And if you have, then what you're going to need is the um, Village in Tuscany Layering Frame Plate and Linda's Dotty Cross Stitch Tuscan Balcony Layering Frame. So if I bring those in so you can see which ones we're talking about. Okay, let me just, I come in too close, but we needed to see. So this is the first plate we're gonna need, the lovely Tuscan Village. And then the dotted cross stitch. I love this. I love all these zigzags and these swirls and everything else. So. Let's go back to my list. So I'm going to put these to one side. Where am I going to put them so I don't lose them? Let me come back in. Right, so I've got my complete set, but then I've also got those two as well. Now, from the starter kit, I know many of you have got that as well. What we're going to need are our black mat to work on. I'm working on the A3 black mat. Black mat. What we're going to need are number one, number two, number three, number four groovy tools okay we're also going to need some parchment oh no i'm jumping ahead hang on groovy start kit tools black mat got those okay next on the list plate mate for a4 square grids with extensions and tabs now it isn't it's sort of optional Okay, because if you're working with um, your large plate, I know you can't really see this. We'll zoom out on this in a moment. But if you were working with A4 parchment, for example, you may want that to sort of hold everything in place. So that's, a, that's an optional, but I've got mine, as always. We need our groovy guard. Just the one. Okay, we've got that. I should start a pile, shouldn't I? I'm going to lose everything. We need some A5 parchment. If you've got A4, that's just perfect. We're going to need a Pergamano number two bold. That's if we you want to do um, the Pico cutting when we come to it. Otherwise, I do have an alternative. Okay. So we've got our two needle bold. We've got our black 12 by 12 super foam. Now we also have that available in A4. But for me, I like to work on a larger area. So we've got the 12 by 12 super foam. Then we have our scissors of choice. So you can either go for your exclusives, your ring locks, or your perga cutters. Okay. So I've got all of those in front of me, as you do. Then nested pico square dies. Now this would be an alternative to perforating and pico cutting okay maybe you're not that far ahead on your groovy bus journey just yet so this will be an alternative which we'll we'll have a look at during the course of this evening then we want our amazonia 8x8 companion paper now I, i've gone for amazonia because it's a color that linda chose but if you go to any of our companion papers, there will be a colour in any of those books um, to suit what we're going to do. OK, so don't worry if you haven't got the Amazonia. You'll definitely find a colour in one of the other ones if you have. A 7x7 white car blank and a tape on it. Okay. So I've got all of that in front of me and I'm surrounded by all my crafty stash, okay? So don't forget, you can download this, but if I come from the top again, just in case maybe you can't print off or you can't download. So if I go through and then it'll give you an idea. And I'm sure many of you will have it to hand as we start to enjoy the evening and craft along. We're gonna take it nice and slowly and nice and chilled. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to zoom out and we're going to have a look at some artwork from the fantastic design team. Now, let me see which one we're going. 
that way let's zoom out okay coming out nice and slowly so you don't all fall off your chair right how are we all doing have we got our tick list already are we gathering our bits and pieces together i'm sure you are i bet many of you have already downloaded this and you've got everything to hand but if you haven't maybe you're just here for for the evening's company there's lots of fantastic friends in the room that we can have a chat to as well but let's have a look at some artwork from the design team so if we have a look at the village in Tuscany plate. So this is the plate traced out. And the whole idea behind this um, new exclusive that we're releasing each month from Linda Williams is all about the layering frames. Okay, Each month has had a different theme. So we've had Christmas, we've had countryside, we've had oriental, and the fourth one, which is the one we're looking at this evening, is Tuscany. And I can tell you that next week sees the launch of the next collection. So that'll be five out of the six. I can't wait. Okay. I love these Bougainvillea flowers sort of wrapped around the frames. And when you look, I mean, you could just use part of it. And the piece of artwork we're going to be working on is this centerpiece. Very, very simple. We're going to trace it out nice and easy. Now, this is where Linda took her inspiration from, this piece of artwork created by Josie Davidson. So if I bring in the two pieces together, so this one here is from Josie, and this one here is from Linda. Different colour options, different framing options but in principle it's the four corners the image in the middle is the same on both and then Josie queen of grids has used one of her grids to frame that piece Linda has taken the dotted cross stitch design and then put that onto some designer paper using our nested doodle dies so it's all about giving you um different options okay so let's pop that one to one side so that's a lovely piece created by um josie then we have this piece created by francis not look at those bougainvilleas and to me that sort of it's I mean, the detail, I'm going to come in on this, I've zoomed in really close on it, it might be a little bit too close on this other camera, but let me see, I've got all the artwork in front, I can, let me, hang on, squish it out of the way. Look at that. I mean, all of the, the artwork from the design team is absolutely stunning, and it doesn't matter what level you're at, you can achieve a beautiful piece of artwork okay then the next piece we're going to look at is from julie campbell i love how she's taken just the inside of that frame from the plate again that lovely little centerpiece next piece is from glynis now this one gives us a sneaky pleat a sneaky pleat a sneaky peek on this outer frame which is on the next plate we'll have a look at in a moment. But isn't it amazing how you can change your colouring options and you can get a completely different look? I love the, the lovely sort of the lavenders and the purples in this one brought together with our coloured parchment and our companion paper. The last one we're going to look at in this collection is from Karen Jackson. And she's, she's, Lula, I'll put my teeth in in a minute, ladies and gents. Um, and she's used our rainbow parchment to create this. I mean, look at the white work on that. This is a, a separate layer. You've got another layer there and then some lovely cream companion paper in the background. Now, the second plate in the collection is the Tuscan Roses and Portico. And we gave you a sneaky peek of that lovely frame 
in that previous sample. Okay. Do I have a favorite frame yet? I probably do have a favorite one in each of the collections. Is this the favorite one from this collection? Mm, humming and hawing on that. Um, it's so difficult to choose because I can see so many different uses. Now, this is a, a lovely piece created by Linda Williams using our colored parchment in the background. So this has been done on two layers. A Pico circle to die cut that. Okay. Really, really lovely. I'm not going to say... I'm going to say this is very simply colored in or colored in very simply. And that doesn't detract from all the time that Linda's put into it, but it shows that it is very, very achievable. The next piece of artwork we're going to look at is this piece from Carol Baker. Is it Carol Baker? Hang on, where's my list gone? Yes, Carol Baker. Now Carol has done loads and loads and loads of layers and loads of pico cutting. So this one here is one layer. This one here is another layer. And she's actually, the layer underneath has been pico cut as well. Crazy. Now, this next piece I'm gonna show you. Oh, excuse the motorbike, joy riding past outside the office. <laughs> Now this, I don't think I've, I've seen this on a piece of artwork before. This one is created by Jill Ascom. And um, what she's done, I know it's difficult for you to say, I'm gonna bring it in on the, the other camera in a moment, but this layer around the outside is on one layer. I love the sort of the, the Harlequin um, effect on the coloring of this lovely sort of lattice work. Then this piece here has been Pico cut on the inside and this layer has been put underneath okay now the magic thing about this one is that the way Jill's done it is that it opens up to reveal inside but this has been decoupaged okay so I'm going to come and show this one off so what I'm going to do look can you see how it's been laid up. Ah, that's how it's done. I did wonder, look, there's a little sneaky, where is it, hang on, over this side. There's a little sneak, uh, there, oh, there. There's a little sneaky foam pad onto there. Clever, really clever. I'll bring it round on, on this way so we can sort of see. I mean, look at all that attention to detail on that. Pico cutting around. <laughs> Look, the little flower pot. The the um, ding dong on the, the ding dong. The, the bell on the outside. Wow. This is just... I could spend the, the next few hours just talking about all this amazing artwork. Okay. Yeah, and I forgot the little beads as well um, on there. Right, moving on to the next piece, same plate, same design, and this one has been created by Francis. I mean, let's just compare the two. I'm not saying compare in relation to the technique, but in relation to it's the same plates being used, but different looks, different coloring methods. Um, the design team, they, they just blow me away every single time we, we come to do a show and um, the sample starts to come in. Now this one is from Carol Pankstello. Another fantastic, this has all been Pico cut. So this is one layer on here and then this is a second layer on top. Me, I would have done it all on one layer and cut back on the pico cutting. <laughs> but it just shows, doesn't it? Now, this is very clever. This one is done by Jane Telford. So Jane has used a partial part of that frame and 
she's used her fantastic Pergamano parchment poppets in there. So you imagine, take the, the lovely poppet out of there, and you could have any image in there. Okay, it doesn't matter. It's that lovely, it's all about the frames and the layers. Now, moving on to the, um, the third plate, each of the third plates in um, the new and exclusive, the layer of frames from Linda, is what we call the, the dotted cross stitch or the tapestry type of effect. And all of the frames are made up from a series of dots of varying sizes. So if you want to get these lovely swirls, you couldn't really do these on a grid quite easily because you wouldn't get that natural flow of the curl, of the curls, of the curves. So this is the third of the A4 square plates in the collection. Here's a lovely piece created by Linda Williams herself. All Pico cut out, Pico cut out in the middle, using a lovely, now this blue was actually added using either the Pergoline pencils, um, or the um, torso crayons. However, this one, uh, for me, the monochromatic look really sort of stands out. And um, this one's been done by Glynis. Okay, look at that. So it's all been done on clear parchment. Those of you that have been following me in Groovy Tuesday, will recognize, recognize, recognize the frame around the outside. This is using the Pico V medium tool. Look at that. It ties in beautifully with the, the inner dots on the design. Okay. The next piece is from Jill Askham again. Now Jill's done different layers and then she's put color around the outside to give it that depth to it. Okay, then the next one is from Jane Telford using a rainbow parchment. Just a little bit of color added to that one. And um, now we're, we're looking at the frame here, aren't we? And all the different elements to it. So this piece created by Karen Jackson I love that. And this then introduces our companion plate that comes with each of the collections. So each collection has a lovely um, A5 square companion plate that works independent of the designs, but also adds a lovely corner to it. So this is the, the piece here, or the plate here. Then, okay. Linda Williams. She's not bad, is she? Our good friend Linda Williams. Look at that. Every time I look at the artwork from the design team, I see something different. So all of these areas here have been Pico cut. These areas here have been Pico cut. The lovely, I mean, that shadow embossing on the poppies and on the I think these are asters, I think. Cornflower, cornflower. Roll that back, didn't say asters, I said cornflower. <laughs> then the next piece is from Francis, combining that lovely dotted cross stitch design frame. And you can see now how it complements the companion. Now this one is very lovely, from Carol Pankstello. Look at that. Pico cut circle, lovely blue companion paper, and changing the colours of the poppies and the cornflowers. A little bit of a, a moon mask on there, I think, Carol. And then some ink around the outside. They're just... And, and when we do the TV shows, obviously we can only show them... We don't get a lot of time, sadly, to indulge in the samples. So that's why we always put them on Barbara's blog, which is barbagrayblog.com. 
it's also you'll find these against the products on the website as well. So once you get the, the plates, you can go to our website, go to this particular plate, and you'll see the finished piece of artwork as well. Now, a few more pieces to share with you while we're all getting our bits together. This one's from Glynis. So look, we've gone from lovely traditional colouring, lovely blues and lilac tones, and now the pinks. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And then the final one that I'm going to share with you this evening, because I can't believe the time already, is from Jill Ascom. And Jill has painted on the front of the parchment. And I'd say, I, I'm going to have a sneaky peek, see what she's used. Um, mm, interesting. Well, I wouldn't have thought that. Really? Goodness me. Okay. <laughs> That really did surprise me. Okay. Let's have a little questions, uh, a little quiz. This has been coloured in on the front using a Pergamano product. Okay. Who wants to have a guess at what, at what product has been used to colour that in the front? I'm going to bring it in on this camera like so i would never have believed that at all okay look okay so we've got dorso crayons from jane any advances on dorso crayons helen saying pencils um jackie saying the pencils Carol Baker saying the Perga colour pens. Mm, any more guesses? I need to work out how to do this. Watercolour, says Susan. Darwi, Perga liner pe pens. Pat Coombs, the same pens. I know. These, this has been coloured in using the Perga colour pens. How? <gasps> I want to know how. <laughs> that is... I When I first looked at this sample, I thought, because Jill um, has a tendency to use like a pearlescent paint um, to put on the front. And um, so I just presumed that's what it was. But it's only now that I have had the opportunity um, to look at it and thought, well, okay, well, let's have a look. And the lovely design team, they write on the back exactly what they use. They don't tell me how they've used it. Um, but, wow. I need some time to play. Goodness me. Whew. I'm just <laughs> overwhelmed by looking at all that artwork because say we do the show, the artwork comes in, we put it on the website and I don't really often get the chance to indulge it in too much detail. And so for everyone this evening that's joining us, I thought it'd be a lovely sort of warm up just to show what you can achieve. And it doesn't matter what level you're at. These are things that you can think, I want to be able to do that. But we need to start somewhere, don't we? So, I think I've waffled enough. I'm going to have some coffee. Don't worry, Ken. This is my normal coffee, which is cold now because it's been sitting there for 25 minutes. However, I've got my refill, my super hot coffee. This cup from the lovely Ken. Um, I don't know if you can see it. I, I'll hold it up, see what it says. Paul's Groovy Tuesday. Um, this will stay hot for the duration of the evening in this cup. Okay. So before I have any accidents, 
let me move all this fantastic artwork over to the side. <coughs> okay. Whee. Right. Yes, the mug that I was drinking from was from the lovely Carol Baker. She made this for me. No talkie before coffee, but it, I could probably still drink it. Right. Okay. I think we're nice and chilled. We're nice and relaxed. So let's have a look at the piece we're going to work on this evening. So we come back in on the overhead. And then let's just sort of break it down and show how we, we sort of come to make this card up. Okay. So we're going to start off with one of our card blanks. Okay. Nice card to, to have our base on. Then what Linda did, she take she taking, she took a piece of white card and she pico cut it. Okay, to create sort of like that white on white effect. Then she took some of our lovely Amazonia paper. Okay. And um, she then used our doodle dies to create a decorative frame. Then comes a piece of artwork. That's been coloured on the back using our Perga colour pens, okay, and Pico cut. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of options here. So if I put that on there, like so, you can see we've got an exact duplicate. However, let's have a look at some of our companion papers. If I take some of our, let's just take this lovely green, can you see? how it's changed the look okay however if I want to bring out that lovely purple and lavender let's put a piece of lavender paper behind and it changes the look again doesn't it but if you like the look of this piece of artwork but you're thinking mm, I don't I can't do it because I can't do the pico cutting then all you need to do is pico cut or cut or just cut down with a, a craft knife and a ruler or a guillotine a square okay so you look at the plate work out how big i mean this is using what size is this this is the the pico die and this is uh what is that <laughs> where's my glasses it's about five five and a quarter inches okay I mean you could go five and a half you could go six it's entirely up to you okay so if you like this but you're being distracted by the pico cutting just a square of parchment that's all you need it really is so I'm gonna take it's all about having options isn't it and when you look at some of the artwork that a design team do and you think, oh, I can't do that. There's always a, a way of maybe adapting and changing it slightly. So, um, so that's what we're gonna have a look at this evening. So I think I'm ready to get started. Are you all ready? Are you all good to go? I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure many of you are just here for the company and you're gonna have a go tomorrow, aren't you? And you know what, it'd be lovely to see your artwork on our groovy, uh, worldwide Facebook page as well. Maybe you've already been creating some pieces of artwork using this collection. Okay, right, so to start off with, I'm going to take the lovely um, Village in Tuscany plate, okay? Need to make sure we can read the word groovy in the top right hand corner. And just to keep it nice and easy, uh, A5 parchment is the same width as an A4 square, okay? Now, before I attach it, I'm going to wipe my parchment. And I'm gonna wipe it, whoops, sorry, off of the plate. Now, we recently had our parchment retreats and everyone has different um, tumble dry sheets. And if they've got a lot of um, sort of lubrication on them, what can happen is it can transfer onto the plate, which then stops your groovy tabs from sticking. Okay, and it's obvious really, but until Barb mentioned it about, well, 
wipe the parchment on the mat and then it won't the slick won't go on the plate and then the groovy tabs will stick but sometimes until someone spots points out the obvious it isn't obvious is it so um lots of top tips there okay so i'm just going to keep it nice and simple and i'm going to attach my parchment centrally to the design okay and to do that i'm going to use my groovy tabs so we'll put one on there and we'll put one on there. I'm going to take my um, groovy guard. Now, when we're tracing out the design, we're going to trace everything except for the straight lines on the frame. Because what we're going to do is replace it with the dotted cross stitch design. Okay. If you haven't got that plate, but you've got this one, then just put the lines in, okay? So we're gonna take the, the, everything's gonna be done in the number one tool. And there's no white work because it's all about the coloring on this particular project. So where do I start? People say to me, where do you start? Where? I don't really have a, I don't say I start in the top left, work round, and I'm just gonna go for it, okay? So I'm gonna take the number one tool, and just press into the grooves. Okay, so I'm gonna do the trees first. Now, if you find that you're getting some resistance, it means maybe your tumble dryer sheet's dried out a little. Um, so just go back over it again. See, my voice has slowed down already now, and I've only just got into the groove. See, for me, the, the, the beauty of the groovy system is being able to sort of like pick and choose um, different elements of the design. If we wanted this lovely little um, Tuscan houses or, I mean, it looks a little bit like um, sort of a monastery, doesn't it? Um, I've got to stop saying, um, I definitely need to put my glasses on. Whoops. Are you having a good chat in the chat room tonight? I'm sure you are. I'm sure Grace is um, keeping you all under control. Okay. I mean, look at the contours of these lovely fields. When Linda works on her designs, I wonder whether, I wonder whether Linda's been to Tuscany. I wonder if she took her inspiration of maybe somewhere that she's visited. I wonder. This looks a very lovely place to go and visit, doesn't it? Those lovely hills and I'll just stay in this little cottage here on my own. Close everything out. See, in the groovy system, it doesn't matter what direction you go in, whether you go left to right, right to left, up bottom to top, top to bottom. And I don't have to worry about making a mistake or putting too much pressure on. Because all we're doing is with very simply, and I mean very, very simply, taking Linda's design and tracing it out. And it I know we always say, and I know maybe many of you, maybe you're tuning in for the first time and you, you haven't got the groovy system yet, but you want to find out what it's all about. Then if you're watching via our YouTube page, just go back and have a look. There is hours and hours of free tutorials from Barbara, not just from, from parchment craft, but from stamps, from gel plates, mixed media, die cutting. Um, I mean, Barb was one of the very first people that I know, or craft people that I know of, that used to do a regular um, YouTube episode. And, um, and I remember back in the day how it all used to be filmed, um, Mr. Jim from the office would be behind the cameras and 
But now, with technology and the way in which it works, we can be here on our own. We're not really on our own, because I've got lots of friends in the room with me this evening. But you know what I mean? I can control the cameras. Um, I mean, I don't. Facebook definitely didn't exist back in the day when Bob first started doing YouTube videos, tutorials. Um, but now, to have the technology, whether you, you do them live, I mean, you can do it on your phone if you wanted to. So, but these craft along evenings are really, and if you're not tuning in live and you're tuning in later on, welcome, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whatever time you're watching. I hope you get some ideas and inspiration from what we're doing. Um, see, and for me, well, not for, just for me, I mean, education has always been at the heart of clarity um, with Barbara. We have our summer retreats, we have our parchment retreats, you've got the shack, and it's all about, it, it's educating, but in a really, I've been on many, many workshops over the years, and, um, they all vary in sort of style and and sort of technique and the way of teaching. I mean, I used to go on Jane Nesterenko's workshops, Wendy Stenton's workshops. I think I actually went on a clarity workshop once. I can't remember now. It's been so long since I've been working with Barbara on the, the retreats. I used to take up, take time off my um, from my proper job back in the day in London, and then come and help Bob with the um, the summer retreats. And when I first got involved, it was at, in Cowden. Um, yeah, time sure does fly, and it changes, doesn't it? Now with technology, we can give free education. Um, and, um, and you can go back and watch it again, and again, and again. You can stop and start, you can turn the volume up, you can turn the volume down. Choices. So, I mean, I love this little sort of bouquet of poppies here. These make just fantastic little, maybe you just want to do a tiny, tiny little piece. Um, there's so much detail on these, these, these plates. And it's always a good idea that when you get um, a groovy plate, just trace it out. Just spend an hour, half an hour, however long it takes you to do it. Just trace it out, and then as you do, you'll start to see different bits. And I've just realized there's another little cottage or a little house up on the hill. I didn't notice that before. Um, but it's all about enjoying. Um, <coughs> so enjoy it, seriously. I'll put my glasses back on. It's all about the process. And all we're doing, to be honest with you, I'm not really thinking about what I'm doing. I'm just letting the artwork and the tool do the work. Okay. And to get the the lovely crisp white line with ease, for me, in a way, um, is enough, if you know what I mean. It's the, the relaxation and the sense of achievement as well, that when I turn over this piece of artwork, I've got something that looks beautiful. So we're just going to follow. I mean, it doesn't take long to do, does it? It really doesn't. 
See, so that's the centerpiece complete now. Now, I say I, I don't need to pay attention. This is where I do need to pay attention because I don't want to do the, get carried away and do these lines. Okay, so I'm going to give you a top tip. See what you'll go wrong now. I'm going to do this flower here while I am concentrating. I'm going to do this flower here whilst I am concentrating and not getting lost in the groove. So what I'm doing, basically, I'm going to do each flower at the end of the line so that when I go in to do the actual imagery itself, I won't get carried away and do the line by mistake. Okay. He says, let's see what happens, shall we? <laughs> Famous last words. And I'm turning the work to me and also to try and keep it in one place for you watching at home. Because the groove plate can be in any position. It doesn't even have to be the right way up. Because it's all about the groove. So I know we had um, one lovely lady in earlier on, hopefully she's still here, that was for the first time. Do we have any other newbies in the room? Anybody tuning in for the first time? Recently found the, the groovy bus? Anybody? I know it takes a while from the time I talk for it to, to filter through. See many regular names popping up. Um, Jane's always there. I've seen lovely Carol Baker in the room from the design team. Kalinis is in the room. Any of more of our lovely design team? I'm sure there is. Right. Okay, so what I've done now is I've done each of those flowers on the corner. Okay. Now, another option you could use, um, which we found useful at the parchment tree, put a groovy tab there. Or another, another option is... some low tack tape. You can put a piece of low tack tape there, either on the parchment or on the plate. Easier on the parchment than the plate, but that will stop you going anywhere further. Okay. How are we getting on? I've got the fan on in here. Because despite all this horrible weather, it's still quite mild. I think this week, the coldest day of the week was on Monday. It was one degree driving into work on Monday. Tuesday, it was 10 degrees. Freaky. That's very hot. <laughs> now I've got a secret to tell you, right? This cup that the lovely Ken bought me, I made this coffee at six o'clock so that I didn't forget to bring it in and put it on the shelf. This is still as hot as it was at six o'clock that it, and it is now, I and mean, it's nearly two hours later. I think this is one of the best presents I've ever had, especially because there's no one here to make me a coffee. <laughs> Where's the glasses gone? I can't see the glasses without the glasses. Right, okay. So let's carry on with this design and we're going to focus on the ball configure in this corner. Okay. See, it won't take long. Once we get the, the line art in place, okay, and then we're going to add in that dotted cross stitch frame. And you're thinking, yeah, but the, the frame isn't a square. See, that's uh, the beauty of the groovy system is that you can change a shape. You really can. Um, so, what we're going to do number one. Everything this evening is being done with the number one tool to give me 
that lovely crisp white line. So we're going to follow it through and create our artwork. Now, during the course of this evening, you may think, okay, I'm happy with just tracing out. I don't want to, to do anything or I'm not yet ready to try some colouring. As I said, on our YouTube page, there's hours and hours of tutorials from colouring to perforating to pico cutting to shadow embossing. We're currently looking at um, the Pergamano multi-needle tools um, from the second handbook that Linda Williams wrote. And the lovely Glynis has created fantastic projects which are shared every Sunday over on the Clarity Matters blog that the lovely Grace puts together. Um, this week we've got, we've got a break from the um, tutorials from... Break sounds horrible. To... I... <laughs> when I say a break, because we was at the Parchment Retreat this week, I didn't do a Groovy Tuesday. So therefore, if we'd done the project from Glynis this Sunday, Glynis would be ahead of the Groovy Tuesday episode. So we've got a lovely... <laughs> so, you know when you say something, you think, we're having a break from Glynis. We're not having a break from Glynis. All we're doing is we're just pausing Glynis's projects while I pause my Groovy Tuesday. <laughs> Glynis, I love you, you know that, and you know that's what I meant. But when I said it, I sounded wrong, okay? So we're pausing the um, projects from Glynis, and the lovely Maggie Byford has created a project for us for this Sunday. And then next week, we resume back on Groovy Tuesday with the multi-needle tools, and we continue the journey with Glynis on the Clarity Matters blog. So I'm sure the lovely Grace, um, I know I am digging myself in the top, aren't I? <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I've, just seen, I've just looked up and seen some of the comments. Um, but I'm sure the lovely Grace will pop a link up to the Clarity Matters blog if it's something that you're not already familiar with. And don't forget, I mean, if you sign up to our emails on our website, then you'll be kept informed of what's coming up on the week ahead and TV shows, um, The Shack, Groovy Tuesday, um, Craft Alongs, special offers. So we like to, to share and um, keep you informed. So um, I'm sure Gracie will put a lovely link up to where you can sign up to our newsletter. Newsletter, email, uh, it's the same thing, really. Um, mail shop, whatever you want to call it. It's all about keeping you informed and keeping you company, just like we are this evening. So look, we've done two corners so far. And then the fun part starts. <laughs> it really does. Dot, 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 dot. But we're going to have options, aren't we? Well, I'm going to have options. And it's not that I'm cheating, but I appreciate it. It's a Friday evening. And you're giving up your time to spend it with everybody. To craft along. Once we get the sort of uh, the principles in place, then you can go off and have a play at your leisure. <laughs> I'm still chuckling to myself over Glynis. Hope Pete's not listening, Glynis. <laughs> oh, goodness me. What is that hole that I'm digging myself into? 
<laughs> okay. I love this. I really do. Once we've traced out these, uh, this this corner and the next one, we'll have a little pause, have a little refresher type thing. Not a refresher, but um, Pete's in his shed. Oh, Glynis, what is he in his shed for punishment? Have you put him out in his shed? <laughs> or he just doesn't want to hear my voice? Oh, goodness me. Poor Pete. Banished to the shed. Um, I'm sure he hasn't been banished. <laughs> so, yeah. So, for, blah, 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 blah. Rewind. Stop digging yourself deeper, Paul. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to finish the this corner and the next one. And then before we start going all dotty, I'll share a couple of other things with you. Okay. Do you want me to share with you? I'm sure you do. Lots of different things to tell you. Lots of fun and exciting things to tell you. See, that's one of the great things for if you join. I mean, if you join in live, that's great. If you're joining in afterwards, it's just as great. You're not going to miss out on anything. It's just, you know. See, these lines, on, a, on another note, um, so the lines could be anything. They really could but they just happen to be beautiful designs from Linda Williams, okay? And when you look at the vast library, vast library of um, designs <laughs> we have at Clarity, um, it's very rare that we discontinue a design. Um, because for me, a lot of the designs are, um, they're timeless. Sort of, they're classics. I was um, having a bit of a tidy up this afternoon in the studio. And I was coming across some um, demos that we did a couple of years ago. And you look at the artwork and you think, wow, that's just so, it still works now. Um, I mean, look at the um, Twas the Night collection from Barbara that she started illustrating 30 years ago. It's still timeless. It really is. Um, and it works all the time. So Gracie has just told me <laughs> everyone is singing a song about me digging myself a hole. Are you now? <laughs> oh dear. Well, I'm glad I'm keeping you entertained in one way or the other, whether it be from the groovy or from my hole digging. <laughs> right, okay, here we go. I'm going to take this off now because we're not adding in anything else on this plate. Okay. Gently remove the groovy tabs. Broke out a new pair of groovy tabs for the evening. And there we go. Lovely. Lovely. It definitely needs a frame, doesn't it? We could have gone with the frame that was on the plate, but we're going to introduce the dotted cross stitch design. Okay. To complete it. And this is where, for me, um, well, not just for me, when Linda was designing this whole collection that she did all at once, she had that foresight to say, right, this one will work with this one, but it will also work with that one. Um, take this one from here, and that will go in there. 
um, to show that how versatile the designs are. And we've given them the, the lovely themes, obviously, so that we've got the Christmas, we've got the countryside, we've got the Oriental, and some of those have the, the styling of those particular themes, whether they've got holly in them or um, Oriental fans, etc., etc. But you can use them across the whole collection. So the collection next week, which is the next week's new and exclusive on Thursday, is lovely. <laughs> You've got to come in on Tuesday to Groovy Tuesday for a sneaky peek on that. Um, Barb may even have a sneaky peek on Monday. And um, it's having that versatility of mixing it. You could take a design and you could do it. That's it. Can't do anything else with it. But to have that foresight and that mind to say, right. And really, it's the images in the middle that you can mix and match as well. They work on their own, but they work beautifully with all of the different frames in each of the collections. So whilst we sort of have a sip of coffee and um, gather ourselves together, sort of wake up a little bit, I'm not a tease, honest, I'm not. Uh, Tuesday, Groovy Tuesday. I thought, let's have a look at what's coming up the week ahead. Okay, no. No, we're not. Yes, yes, we are. I'm going to look. <laughs> it's getting the balance right. Do I do this first? Do I do that first? I'm going to do this first. Let's have a look on the, the overhead. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in because I can't even read it. If I can't read it, nobody at home can read it. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in. It's coming. Okay. So... Tomorrow at 9 a.m. sees the release of the Linda Williams Christmas Compendium Stamp Set Part 3 on our website. The lovely Dawn Wheeler showcased them on Create and Craft on yesterday, Thursday, and also at 8 o'clock this morning. So they'll be available on our website um, tomorrow at 9 o'clock. All right, let me move down the list. Let me do this. Then also tomorrow... The lovely Tina Cox will be on Create and Craft. Get Groovy with Tina at 1 o'clock and 5 o'clock. Then nothing on Sunday apart from the Clarity Matters blog. Then Monday we're back in the shack with Barb on Facebook and YouTube at 10 o'clock. Then on Tuesday it's Groovy Tuesday with yours truly at 10 a.m. Then nothing on Wednesday. On Thursday, on Crate and Craft, we've got Crafting with Clarity at 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Then, also on Thursday, is the launch of the new and exclusive at 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. So, you've got Barb on at 3, me on at 4, Barb on at 7, and me on at 8. Okay. Then... On Friday, it's the final live hour at 8 a.m. with the new and exclusive. And then Barb's back on at 9 o'clock and 1 o'clock. So let's have a look. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hours of TV to keep you company from Thursday through to Friday. Tina's on tomorrow, as I say, at 1 and 5. And then... 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. If you missed the shows on Create and Craft, it's the same principle where we're releasing the, I'm doing the groovy Linda Williams Laying with Frames collection, which we're, we're spreading the, the love and the design over a period of time. The lovely Dawn Wheeler has been taking um, stamps from Linda Williams in relation to the Christmas Compendium. And the designs were taken from the Christmas Treasures groovy that we did last year. So if you missed the latest release, okay, let me bring those in. Let me share with you. So I'm going to do it this way. C is for Christmas in Groovy. Okay. Stamps. Okay. 
So you've got that lovely wreath, you've got Merry Christmas, and then you've got different. I wonder if I come in on this camera. Ooh, lots of glare. There we are. Uh, that's better, isn't it? So there we go. So that's that stamp set. Oops. A6. So I'm going to. Right, I'm going to jump between two now, see how good I am. Then we've got Santa. Two different directions. See if I can get the stamp right now. And then, whee, there we go. Noel, Santa. Look. These are lovely. Then we go back to the overhead. Then we've got home for Christmas. Look, little doggy, Christmas tree. Let me come in on this one. Where are we going? There we go. The door, the little doggy, the lamppost. I love this frame here. Not the frame, just see. There we go. And back to number two. A trio of baubles. Trio of baubles. With the bow, that, that that branch is lovely. It also looks like a feather, doesn't it? Um, and all of the the artwork from the fantastic design team will all have been on a blog that Barbara did yesterday, I think it was. Then we had the chandelier, or as Dawn called it, a chandelabra. And then, come on, Paul, sort it out. There we go. Beautiful designs. So, you get them on Crank and Craft now, or at nine o'clock tomorrow morning on the Clarity Crafts website. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. So, see, look, some little sneaky peeks, well, not sneaky peeks, but if you know what I mean, but um, giving you a heads up what's coming up on the week ahead. Um, yeah, and we're having a fun evening. No, it's only just gone eight o'clock. Loads of time. <laughs> it's so hot. It is unbelievable how hot that says. I've never known anything like it. Right, okay. Let's go back to this one. So what we're going to do now is add in that dotted frame. Now, you may, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, coffee went down the wrong hole. Now, you may have one of the other dotted frames in the collection. You may feel, oh, I want to use that one instead. It's entirely up to you. See, for me, it's the versatility of the design. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at what element we want to trace out. And for me... These are as you go to the largest area, and we have a look at some guidelines to see where we want to emboss. Okay, so I reckon I'm going to come down. Hmm. So you spend just as long working out where to emboss and emboss. I'm going to go there. Don't ask me why, but it looks good to me. Okay. Now, in this top part, I've got nowhere to attach my parchment. So this really is where the plate mate for A4 plates really comes into play. So what I'm going to do now is take off the extender plates, pop that around the outside. Let me zoom out so you can see what I'm talking about and stretch wait i've got the fan on in here because it's so warm um so there we go so you can see so there's your plate like so okay and if i line it up on there i've got nowhere to attach the part if i attach it to the black mat i'm creasing the parchment okay so what we're going to do is bring the plate mate into play just like so and then we're going to attach it with some groovy tabs to keep it together 
So now, when I position my parchment in place, where was I going to put it? It was about there, I reckon. Okay. So now, I've got somewhere to attach the parchment to at the top as well as the bottom. Okay. I will zoom back in in a moment. But I just wanted to show on a wider screen one of the benefits of the plate mate. Okay. Now, if budget doesn't allow, I remember back in the day, let me zoom in now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to zoom in. Back in the day, and which way am I going? In. I will reposition the plate once we're in nice and close. There we go. I mean, I remember back in the day when we only had the original plate mate from the starter kit, and then we had the borders, um, and we used to attach the borders to the edge of the um, plate mate. Um, and there I said, oh, yeah, but we want a plate mate. So we did a plate mate. Okay, so glasses again. Then you can choose what you want to do, okay, on this multi level frame. You can just do the swirly bits, um, you can do either side, just like what Lynn has done. Or you could do the swirly bits and then put a straight line either side. It's entirely up to you. And as you get more confident with what you're doing, you'll experiment a little bit more. And you think, oh, I wonder what it would look like. Oh, that was a bit of a high pitch. Oh, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, goodness me. Okay. So I'm going to take the number one tool. And what I'm going to do now is push into these dots. Okay. You can do the number two if you choose to. But I'm just going to go for the number one. And as I'm push, push, oh, 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 oh. as I am pushing into the dots, I'm giving it a little wiggle. Okay. But look how, look at that. It is magic. It really, really is. I feel like a magician. But I'm not the magician. The magic is in the design, the parchment, the tools. I'm just the magician's assistant, if that makes sense. I suppose I'm Debbie McGee to Paul Daniels. <laughs> Paul Daniels would be the, the groovy plate. Where did that come from? No idea. The coffee's kicking in now. Okay. So you can see how easy it is. Okay. Now, we have some choices, ladies and gentlemen. Because these are straight lines, <laughs> do we want to do each dot individually or do we want to do them quickly? So I'm going to show you both. So I'm going to press, I'm still using number one, and now I'm going to go to the number two tool and I'm doing that. Okay. Can you tell the difference? between that and that. I don't think so. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm using my groovy guard to protect the line underneath. Go on, give it a go. It's really satisfying. It really is. 
Linda, it is just coffee. <laughs> I'm coffee total. Um, I think it's just the, the enjoyment of the company. It's keeping me happy and giving me the giggles. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here, in a way, I don't really need to protect the area underneath because I've already traced it, so it's not going to go anywhere. So all we're going to do now, go on, give this a go. It is so satisfying. <laughs> it really is. I love it. It was a little bit more difficult to do it on these ones. So these ones, the swirly whirly ones, you have got to do individually. But go on, give it a go. <laughs> it's very addictive. Jackie does it as well. Well done, Jackie. I oh, know. Little things, little things. Now, as I get closer to the leaf, I'm going to do those individually. Okay. So, depending on, see, I don't want to, I do want to <laughs> ignore me, ignore me what I'm saying. See, you could do that top and bottom and have straight lines down the side if he was a little bit pushed for time or you wanted to do a little twist on it um but i'm going to stick to the plan new groovy tabs no four groovy tabs do you need four groovy tabs? of course you need four groovy tabs you need more than four groovy tabs uh, excuse my head for a moment as I just lean over. Let's have a look. So we're going to go over to here, like so. There we go. And what I'm doing is I'm using the line on the plate mate as a guide to make sure that I'm going on straightish. Okay. Just like so. Well secure now. So I'm going to do top and bottom. And let's go with the number two tool. So we don't have to wiggle them. We just need to push. Although I do like a little wiggle. Anyone else like a little wiggle? So there's hours and hours of fun just in this one plate. You could spend many an hour doing each of these individual frames in varying different combinations. And you can do it the very therapeutic way by doing one dot at a time. Although doing it quickly like that's quite therapeutic as well. So let's just put these ones in like that. And then this is just as satisfying as here that hearing the um, pico scissors snip when you do your pico cutting. Uh, so very enjoyable. But you just need, I mean, the other, oh, the other option is that rather than pull the tool down into the area that I don't really want it to be, is I could turn the plate round and draw it like I do at the top, draw in to the area I've already been. Okay. Because I thought I'd just, because even with the best will in the world, so to speak, you can still have a little mishap and then you just adapt your design accordingly <laughs> oh i've got those dots there bring that in just for completion 
Okay, so that's the bottom, and now we're going to do the top. And this isn't, well, I don't think it's cheating. Um, <laughs> Galilis, I like it when I run over bubble wrap in my wheelchair. Very satisfying. I get that. I totally get that. Uh, with bubble wrap, it's when you you take it and you wring it out, and it goes crack, 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 crack. I bet it's the same type of thing in your in your wheelchair, isn't it? Um, that's but yeah. <laughs> like carefully around the leaf. Okay. How are we doing? Oh, plenty of time. Plenty of time. I'm not going anywhere. Right, let's have a little looky. Okay. So there, there we go. We can see now how it's starting to come together. See, for me, let me just move these out of the way. Let's take the groove tab off. I need to zoom out a little bit. Let me zoom out just a fraction. Just a fraction. Get me exercises in as I stretch. There we go. <coughs> so top and bottom gives a really lovely look. I think with straight lines down there would give it a different look as well. And then here's one that is totally completed with the frame around all four sides okay so you can get different looks okay depending what you're after okay so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna carry on working on my pit i'm not going to continue the two sides because there's a couple of things that i wanted to sort of show and for me the, the key part of this evening's project is that lovely coloring in on the back that um josie and linda created okay composition in relation to this actual design is very simple because the only changes we've made is the joining up of the bougainvillea corners okay as i said if you're not into your pico cutting then this is where the pico square or just a square of parchment same result sort of if you know what i mean um it's a square when it's cut out when it's been pico cut it is a square it just depends whether you want straight lines or whether you want pico cut lines okay oh, let me bring my chair in okay so what we're going to do now, we're going to have a look at the colour. Okay. So I'm going to work on my piece. And for that, we are going to need some of our Perga colour pens. You know, we were talking about that piece of artwork that Jill created using these pens. I would never have guessed that. Now, the lovely Linda, in her preparations, gave me a list of what colours to use from the Perka Colour Pens. Because, as you know, all of the pens have numbers on them. So, do I need number eight? No, don't need number eight. Okay. So, I'll keep this on here so you can have a look at the colours we're going for. So the blues and mauves is number 9, 10, 12, and 13. Greens, 15 and 16. Browns, 19 and 21. Yellow, number 3. Red, 26. Sound like a bingo caller. Grey, 11. Legs, 11. Was it legs, 11 for 11? Now, I'm sad. I'm not, I'm not sad. <laughs> I'm not sad. Oops, sorry, I'm not sad. Sorry. I'm sad that I'm going to go to my pink bag like this. 
Because they're all in numerical order. <laughs> on, let's see about. Okay, the lovely Grace has listed the colours for you as well. Right. These are, those of you that are watching on TV, you know that these are in numerical order. So, number nine. I need that one. So, that must be number 10, 11, 12, 13. So, they're my blues and mauves. Then, my greens, 15 and 17. Brown, a bit obvious, really. 19 and 21. Yellow, number three. Red, 26, turn the page, there's my 26. I'm guessing these are all the right colours if I put them back in the right place. And then grey, number 11. Okay, so these are the colours, lovely rainbow colours, that we're going to be using for this piece. Now, you can use any colours, it depends whether you want the lovely sort of lavender fields or whether... You, Maybe you want to go red with the poppy fields. Okay. Um, let's pop that onto there. I think it's getting quite windy in here. The fan's getting, the fan isn't getting stronger. It just feels as if it's getting stronger. Okay. So I'm going to change the camera in a moment to a different angle. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on the back still. Okay. So let's start off with, I'm just going to pick a, I'm going to pick a purple. And what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to scribble out because I'm going to chop it off just to see what that color is. So I've got that one there. So this is number 10. Okay. Then if I go for, this is number nine, like so. Let me zoom in so you can really see that. Ooh. And woo, here we come. Okay, so that's the 10 9. Then more of a, a bluey color. So this one is number 13. So it's always a good idea. I mean, the lovely Linda's given us the, the color combinations, but until you sort of trace it out, not trace it, add the color, you don't really want to go, right, well, where's Linda's on the 10? Um, so if you do this, this will be like your little key. And it's also a good record of the numbers that you're using. So I would say, looking at the piece of artwork that Linda has created, the lavender fields have been done with number 10. Okay. So let me find my number 10, which was the first one. That was handy, wasn't it? Let's put that piece of artwork to one side. Okay. Glasses required. A slurp of my boiling hot coffee. I'm going to take my groovy guard. And let's have a look at, let's see. Mm. I'm going to turn Linda's piece of artwork over to give me my guide. Okay. So this is the, what Linda has created. This is the back. Okay. So you can see by varying depths of color will give the sort of like the, the pointillism, the, the shading effect. I mean, look at the houses there. The dots are more intense on that side of the building than they are on there. Now, one of the great things about the Perga Color pens is that they are double-ended. So they have like a bullet tip and then, I'll bring another one in, they've then got a fine tip. Okay, let me come in. Let's see, how we're coming on this camera. Okay, so you can see. This has got like a plastic sheath around it, so it protects the nib, okay? And then you've got the bullet one 
sort of thing. So they're, they're lovely pens to work with, not just on um, parchment craft, um, but for your everyday colouring in. And also to have that fine line in 30 different colours. So if you like um, your doodling um, and you want to doodle in a different colour as opposed to like a black, then, I mean, look, 30 colours in one tin. So what we're going to do, I'm going to start off with... I need number 10, don't I? Come in number 10. So I'm going to start off with, firstly, by moving the piece of artwork. I'm just turn it upside down so you can see. Right. This will be interesting. <laughs> oh, dearie me. I need to turn it around so I can see it. Sorry. I can't do it upside down. Okay. <laughs> oh, dear me. I will do some and then I'll turn it around so you can see because it probably looks really odd to you. Um, you know what? I'm going to give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Don't answer that. <laughs> really, do not answer that. What's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen at this moment in time is that I can spill this coffee over my artwork. But I'm not going to. Okay. Are you still with me? Is everyone falling asleep? Okay, I've got to try. I can do this. I can. Concentrate. See, I have to concentrate on this now. <laughs> now I'm debating on whether to look at the screen, which is the right way, or look at the parchment, which is the wrong way. <laughs> right, I'm going to do a piece, and then you can tell me whether I'm looking at the parchment or whether I'm looking at the screen, at what you're looking at. All right, I need to get comfortable. So what we're doing now is we are going to start... Start near the bottom of the bushes, okay, and we are just lightly tapping with the thick end of the pen, okay. It, look, it doesn't look like anything um, <laughs> at all. Don't worry about going over the white lines. You need to go over the white lines. Although Linda didn't. But I feel that I need to. It's with my glasses on, my very focal glasses, this is really weird. Okay. So. I'm not tapping hard. I'm just gently tapping. So all of a sudden... My fields are in blossom. And the idea is you're sort of thinking about it, but you're not thinking about it. Try not to overthink it, okay? <laughs> so what I need to know now from everybody watching, am I doing this by watching the parchment or watching the screen. So hands up who reckons parchment. So P for parchment, S for screen. Let me know what you think. And then I'll tell you. <laughs> okay, so we're just building up. Because we don't want to saturate with the colour. Okay, so we've got P from Linda, P from Anne, S from Glynis. So, I mean, many of you that um, have been in the shack with Bob, there was a project, I can't remember what it was, in lockdown, um, where Barbara did the, the pointillism and the shading on one of the projects. So what I'm going to do now is turn over, turn over, it goes to the fine tip now. 
so it's smaller dots okay so oh it's a real mixed it's a real mixed um response isn't it screen and parchment well i can honestly tell you that <laughs> i'm looking at the parchment <laughs> i can't <laughs> my head does not compute looking at the screen i have just about know where left and right is i've got no charts of um looking at the screen and doing this <laughs> so i'm gonna go back to so look at me mid design where's linda's bit of work okay so then you would just tap 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 in to add color to our fields and again don't overthink it if you overthink it then It won't be enjoyable. And um, this is like stippling, but easier. I think this is easier than stippling. Um, but I must admit, it's very weird doing it upside down. <laughs> but I think we're, get, we're getting the effect, aren't we? So I've just got to work out where's the houses. And so let's go in. I think this is a field. And sometimes it doesn't look as if it's anything until it's done. Okay. Trust me. <laughs> I'm a parcher. <laughs> right. Just as a comparison, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring Linda's piece in that she's created to see what it looks like. Where's your one going? So this is it, this bit here. And we've put this field in place so far. So it looks the same, doesn't it? Linda's looks lighter because it's on parchment. If I put a piece of parchment under there, there we go. Mine's very, um, mine's had good growth this year. I've got a lot more um, lavender than Linda. It must have been a better season. <laughs> um, right, so. Oh dear, sometimes I talk a load of rubbish. That coffee's now just starting to cool down. So, back to my number 10 tool. Okay, going for the wide tip. Okay, and where are we going? So, just dot, 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 dot. I'm not tapping hard because I don't want to damage the nib on the pen. So all I'm doing is just tap, 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 tap. I know if Maggie Craner was in the room, she loves this. She, Maggie loves a bit of stippling. But to stipple with colour, bonus. So you just add it. So I, I think this would look lovely in red. It'd be a beautiful sort of poppy field. And you can do one row at a time. You could ha have different colours, couldn't you? So you could have different shades of lavender. I'm going to give that a go. Experiment. Just trace out the fields. Trace out the fields and try different colors. 
yellow could be daffodils. Okay, so that's that one. So let's go for the lighter shade. So I'm swapping over to the number nine now. Dot, 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 dot. Oh, look, that one's escaped into that field, into that row. <laughs> Tulips, yeah. Could be any flower, couldn't it? And this could be anywhere in the world. Um, just happened that this evening we're in Tuscany. But this imagery... Could be any field. It could be in Kent. Rapeseed for yellow. Oh, I love the smell of rapeseed. Um, driving down the country lanes with the windows open. Love the smell. Okay, so we're going slightly on detail. These are very... Um, I've definitely had more growth this year than Linda has. <laughs> she did. <laughs> That's my excuse anyway. Oh dear. But you can get varying shades and depth. Now at the moment, it probably doesn't look anything to you at home. Let me, I wonder if this would help. Oh, why didn't I think of that? Why? Just another piece of parchment. Because if I put white paper underneath, look, let me show you. If I put a white piece of paper or card underneath, I can't really see where the contours of the light of the field is. But just another piece of parchment. Look. There we go. Why well, didn't I think of that before? So let me turn it over and let's have a little looky, shall we? Put the lids back on my pens. I mean, I think it looks good from where you're looking. <laughs> All right, let's turn it over that way. Look. That looks nice, doesn't it? Does it? Do you think it looks nice? Yeah. I mean, because it's not over, is it? You've got to do all the fields. You've got to do all the bushes. You've got to do the houses. Should we do a house or the monastery or whatever it is we're calling it? I mean, this is a lovely way of um, adding texture without adding texture. And obviously, we're doing this on a hard mat as well. But I mean, even if we were on a soft mat, um, it wouldn't turn the parchment white because I'm not applying that much pressure. So let's turn it over. It's right. Let's try and do a house upside down. I don't know where we're going. Let's do this little one down here. Let's be adventurous and do this one. Okay. So for that, Linda has used the different rounds. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to test my browns to see the colours, okay? So if I come in over here, let's turn it around so I can see, so I can put my little colour chart. So this one is 21, okay? And then this one is 19, okay? So I'm going to go back. Let's go back. So we're not in Australia. We're in Tuscany. And we're going to do this little cottage or house here. Okay. So I'm going to go for the fine tip. Now, when you look at the pens, 
Okay, I, I, I know this, but I never do it. Okay. Can you see? Hang on. It, under the cap here, this end is ridged. Okay. And on the other end, there's no ridge. It's, I know it's different pen, but there's no ridge. So one end has got a ridge, another end hasn't. Okay. Now the one with the ridge is the fine point. Okay. Now there is a little picture also there and there. That one's thinner than that one. But it was Glynis that told me about this, that if, you, if you've got the ridge, then here we go. Fine tip. If there's no ridge, thick tip. Okay. So I know it, but why do we always take the wrong end off that we want? We do it automatically. That's what I do anyway. Okay. Fine tip. And all we're going to do now is we're going to dot, 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 dot. This is, I like this. I got in with the wrong one. That one, let me just check. No, I'm in with the right one. So we're doing this, and then, what a way to decorate the house. This is good, isn't it? Oh, loads of little dots. I forgot to trace the window out on this one, so I've just blocked in the window. <laughs> okay, and then when it's closest to the tree, we're going to go in a little bit more depth. And the idea, it needs to hold the pen upright. Now, I know when I did this on TV, it was quite difficult because the overhead on TV. So, for example, if I come in on the, the overhead here, I say, you can't really see because my hand is blocking. Um, but here at the studio uh, in the Unibri, I can come in on that side so you can see how it's working. Because although they've got loads of cameras up at the studio, sometimes, it, it if, especially if I've got stuff in front of me, it can be quite difficult for them to sort of come in on there okay so that is the side of the house there so let's change color fine tip look i'm remembering i'll forget again and then dot 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 i reckon i need the other end A bit more intensity. Okay. There. Talk amongst yourselves while I'm dot, 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 dot. <laughs> I think my house needs rebuilding as well. So if over watered in the lavender fields, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and the house needs rebuilding. Oh, dear me. All right, so we've done, we've done a house of sorts. Should we have a look at a tree? Let's go for a tree. So I'm going to go, I reckon, yeah, yeah. I'm going to test my greens before I use my greens. Right. So for these, are they like poplar trees, cypress trees? I'm going to use, they're just lovely tall trees. I'm going to use number 15. Okay. For these particular ones. Now, I do need to pay attention 
because when it's upside down, they don't look like trees. And I need to make sure I don't go in between the trees because in between the trees needs to be lavender. Okay. So do I put, no, let's just do some trees. Dot, 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 dot. I do need to stay within the lines on these. Okay. I just need to make sure I'm in the trees and not in the field. Otherwise, I've got a grass. I've... Okay. So if I accidentally went in the fields, then these fields behind would be grass. They'd be grass fields. There'll be, um, the lavender won't have flowered yet in these fields, if I made a mistake. <sighs> you just got to think of a way around it, haven't you? <sighs> cool you have. Things it's obviously not. Yeah. Let's go for the picking nib on this one. Bigger trees. Definitely wearing a pair of glasses definitely helps. Well, for me, it does anyway. Everyone's still, everyone's still there, or. Everyone's gone to sleep. It's like therapeutic, isn't it? The dot, 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 dot. So what I can do now is come down on one side with a bigger nib, nib. Just to concentrate, to have a little bit of darkness. I think so, anyway. Okay. I think it looks okay. It isn't over till it's over. Right. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go <laughs> I'm gonna go to it. I'm gonna go to the overhead camera for the big reveal, so to speak. So I'm gonna do it the whole way. I'm gonna go on black. So there we go. It's lovely. Yeah, none the wiser. Um, but of course, if I take a piece of parchment underneath, it lightens it. If I take a piece of a lovely companion paper, oh, there you go. You can really see the, the lovely different shades of lavender in this field, can't you? What about happens if I put the green? underneath yeah you can still definitely works better on the um so this is from the amazonia page let me bring it up no no i'm gonna go back on this one look look he says see where that's really i'm gonna come in re um, really really close because i'm seeing it even closer on Woo, sorry it doesn't look as if there's much lavender in those fields, but it's not until you pull away and you get the, the overall effect, isn't it? So if I compare, I shouldn't compare, but I just wanted to, just to show, there isn't much difference in mine and Linda's, okay? Linda's is a little bit more intense, believe it or not, in certain areas, and mine's a little bit lighter. But they're flowers. Um, it's lavender. So it's all about having, <coughs> I said, change the colour of it. Um, we spoke earlier and we said it could be tulips, it could be daffodils, it could be rapeseed. Um, 
the fields can be whatever color you want them to be. Um, the lovely, see I like the effect of where Linda's done the, the blue in the sky to create that lovely illusion of the, the light coming in from behind. And we're looking on the back, don't forget. So when I bring in the, the piece here, you can see how we've got that lovely color in the background. And then if we wanted to, what Linda's done here, so this would probably take a, a little while, obviously, to, to fill in those fields and the, the trees and the houses. But then you've got the, the lovely poppies that we can just add instant color to. So if I take my um, red, my number 26, with my glasses on, okay. And then all I'm gonna do, very, very, I'm not going on heavy. I'm sort of gently stroking. Let me come in on this one now again. So we can see where we're going. Come over this way. Let me tell, where's my groovy guard gone? So I'm, gonna, so I'm just gently applying the color. Now there's a tendency to keep going on top of it. And if you do that, what can happen is that the parchment can get too moist and it starts to, hang on, let me, t I can turn this, I can, can definitely do this one upside down. Um, and it can tend to um, fluff up. Okay, so all I'm gonna do now, because there was something that Barb showed us at the parchment retreat. Um, on Tuesday with color. So let me have a look at this one here. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, put my pen there for a moment, and I'm gonna delve into my pink bag, and I'm going to retrieve my blending pen. Okay. And um, from my blending pen, I also need some blending nibs. So, blending nibs, blending pen, okay. And just for convenience, I would normally use my mix map, but because it, I want to keep it in focus, I'm just going to scribble out some red onto, I mean, it doesn't look, there it is, the red on there, okay. Then I can pick up some color on the pen. Now, if I go direct onto the parchment by picking up that color, I'm not gonna get a smooth finish, okay? Let me just come over here and just show you. So, it's not very smooth, okay? So what you need is a clean nib and it needs the tiniest amount of moisture. Now, to get that moisture, I would say if I had it to hand, would be sort of like a dampened kitchen towel with some water on. You would just gently, because you don't want to soak the nib. Okay, so just imagine that's what I've done. And can you see the difference now? between the two, okay? So I've got a slightly moist nib, so to speak. And for those of you on the parchment retreat, will know exactly what Barb showed. <laughs> chuckle, chuckle. But now, look, all of a sudden, you have a different shade of red. Glynis, you've revealed the secret. <laughs> oh, dear. Glynis, I wasn't going to tell the secret. But only 
on a clean nib, obviously. So let's turn this over and have a look at the, if I hold it up, you can see. So this is where we took the pen direct to, um, to the parchment. And then this is using the blending nib with a little bit of moisture. Okay. So what it also means is that if you give that a chance to dry, because the pen direct to the parchment is dry, but if I was to go back on with the pen again, say I'd gone on with a, a lighter colour. Um, if I'd gone on with a lighter colour and I wanted to build some depth on it, you would, like I would with the pencils, okay, you would keep going on and keep going on and sort of building that colour up. But with the pens, you can't do that, okay. Um, but this technique that Barb showed us on Tuesday gives it a different subtle shade. And watch this, Barb used it like a blue, there was like a, say like a, I don't know, a six petaled leaf, uh, flower. And so she started off, she loaded up her blending nib, her moist blending nib, picked up the color, started on one petal, worked all the way around. And by the time she'd gone all the way around the petal, it was various varying shades of that blue okay so i would say you let that um dry and then if you want to you can go back in and just add a little bit of if i want to i could take that really fine tip and then just add but it won't move as much it's i'm not saying it's weird it, it it is strange that you can put the color direct onto the parchment and it's hard to move okay put it on mix mat or a groovy guard and a blending nib a moist blending nib not soaking wet you don't want to dip it in water um it just needs to be slightly moist um then you can move it around a little bit or you could use the water brushes and we've often done that in groovy tuesday but the downside well not the downside with the water brush it takes longer to dry but I mean, if i do that that is dry but if i'd done that with the water brush um then um it would still be wet nobody's ever explain to me why that would be i'm sure there's a scientist out there somewhere that could probably explain it but oh, i'm not worried about it it's just that i know if i'm using that technique it takes a little bit longer so i can't believe it is that time already um i mean let's have a look at what linda's done um on the back she's created all those lovely that we're looking on the back of this one so all those uh, pointillism then she's introduced the color with the pencils in the borders then the pens in the bourgainvillea and then finally she's perforated around the outside and then pico cup but as i said if you're not at that stage then all you need to do is where's it gone who's borrowed my pico square die cut piece of parchment hiding okay so you could do exactly the same on there without any cutting out at all lovely and changing the color from behind um, definitely makes it look different. If I go, so like for, for Linda's piece there, so we've got the on the lovely lavender, if we go onto a more, um, the designer paper, it changes the look and the depth of the color. Let's go sort of half and half. So you can sort of see 
like one of those magic pictures, isn't it? But can you see the difference it makes? So it depends whether you want, moody isn't the right word, but a darker image, or whether you want those colors in those fields to really jump out. I could just spend 10 minutes doing this. <laughs> just put it out there and go, let's go green. <sighs> oh, goodness me. I hope you've enjoyed this evening. I have. Um, I know, hopefully, um, if you can stay watching to the end, that you've got something out of it. Um, I say Linda took her inspiration from that beautiful piece of artwork from Josie Davidson. I don't know, Barb's done the pointillism in the shack. So I'm sure if you just go back and look at some shack episodes, you'd find it with pencils on card. Have a play. Um, don't go too heavy with the pen. Um, just practice, draw, just draw, trace out the field and just have a practice just on the back. Um, give it a go and see whether it works for you. Um, maybe it's a little bit too time consuming for some and you just want to go with your pencils um, or your pens. Try using the blending pen, moist nib in your blending pen um, and pick up the colour with the pens to get that lovely gradient of colour as well. Maybe use the dorso crayons. So many different options for um, applying the colour in different depths and different layers. Uh, and when we look at the artwork from the design team, I really need to find out how this lovely piece of artwork from Jill, how that's been done with the Perga colour pens. On the front with Perga colour exclusives taken from the mix mat with a slightly damp brush. The Perga colours give a matte effect which brightens well embossed. Drop shadows, Perga line of bee pencils, glossy accents on the bees. I still, my head does not, my brain does not compute. Um, it really doesn't. I just can't. I'll have a play at some point. <laughs> at some point. Um, but it's lovely. Um, so thank you as always for your company um, this evening. Thank you to the lovely Grace for keeping the chat going and dropping all the links in and texting me, make sure I'm still with it. <laughs> um, Glynis, Jane, lovely design team. Um, Thank you as always. Um, and so don't forget, Tina's on TV tomorrow. The Linda Williams Compendium is available on our website from nine o'clock in the morning if you're into your stamping. Barb's back in the shack on Monday and I'm back with you on Tuesday for Groovy Tuesday uh, with some sneaky peeks of what's coming up. So enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Hope the weather stay isn't too bad where you are um yeah and go and have a play get those pins out dot 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 take care now and i'll see you again soon bye bye